So Robo Studio has few shaders available for developers to use and these shaders aren't really classified anywhere but I'm still going to overview them. So as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel and also check out my Patreon page for exclusive content like places from my videos. But anyways. But before I go into any of this stuff, I'm just going to bore you guys with a bit of theory and explain to you what a shader is. And I also kind of need to explain what a material is in comparison, where a normal material, if I just get a part, is just a way of defining appearance. If you were to apply a material on an object like this, you would tell the game engine how the model should look and basically behave, where you basically just tell it that this, this object has one specified material and it's supposed to look like, in this case, a brick. And now a shader on the other hand, a shader is something that we can really see because it's a program or even an algorithm that runs on your graphics processing unit, which means the GPU or a graphics card. And how shaders work with materials, they tell the game engine or even the hardware rather how to render that specified material. So shader would be a thing that's responsible for, you know, just displaying to you how things look. They take in the lightning, the environment, the surface of an object and so on. So now that we have the theory out of the way, let's actually move into these shaders. And I've already made a video on a highlight since it's actually considered a shader because in this case it alters how the whole object is basically rendered. And it can even be a mix or an overlay shader based on its behavior with the field transparency as well as the outline transparency as well. But basically the shader part is that it shades the object in a different way than the normal behavior. You can even see the lightning being reflected on the teapot. It doesn't really behave differently on the environment except if I were to change the field transparency. And I just enabled the shadow on this, but I'm not really focusing on the shadow that the object has from the sun. I'm mostly talking about the part that if I move my camera over here, you are unable to see the actual, you know, the thing that you pour the tea through. And even the outline from the highlight instance is a form of shading. And now we have something really interesting that uses reflections, but it's not really reflections of the environment and surrounding, it's a reflection of the skybox. And how this effect is achieved is by the reflectance property. If I were to change it to zero, you can see that the guy right here isn't reflecting the skybox anymore. Now it's only doing it partially, and now it's doing it fully. And again, this is also altering the shading of the object. You can see that this even could count as a different material of like chrome, gloss and so on. And I'm just going to go into the documentation about the reflectance property where this paragraph says that this property determines how much the part reflects the skybox. But later on, it says that the reflectance is not affected by the base part transparency property unless the part is fully transparent in which case reflectance would not render at all. So the transparency affects the reflectance property of the object. And reflectance may or may not be ignored depending on the material of the part. So it also has influence over the material. And then we have, well, this. And this thing is just a torus knot with a glass material set to transparency above 1. This is how it looks by default, but basically this well shader is kind of an unintended behavior. You can again see that there is some kind of a distortion as well as reflections. But to give you more insight on it, I recommend that you watch my video about the Roblox's glass, which I'm going to leave in the description. And you can also probably see why I didn't really classify any of these except the highlight as an actual shader. There isn't really anything in studio or even on the documentation about well shaders on Roblox, except well one additional paragraph that I'm going to be showing later. But this is not really everything yet, there is still few stuff that I wanted to talk about. One of which is going to be PBR. And this right here is a PBR material, where PBR stands for physically based rendering, which is a method of well shading and rendering. And that method from what you can see also uses different maps in the surface appearance instance. You have the color, metalness, normal and roughness. And that's because the PBR method uses these maps to achieve this effect of the object while interacting with the environment. You can see that the light is reflecting from the surface and there are different dense rough areas and etc. And it would be nice if Roblox added different maps under the surface appearance property because with that we can actually achieve different materials and possibly these shaders. Now I'm just going to go under the view tab and open up the terrain editor. And right now I'm just going to fill, well, on a way smaller area, I'm just going to fill this zone with, well, water. And you can't really see anything different than the reflectance because, well, it's just reflecting the skybox. But if I were to actually move right here, you can see that the water itself is reflecting the sphere. 
if I move it a bit closer, the effect is just going to be easier to see. And I believe that this effect is actually done by a shader. And I've also mentioned this point about the water having reflection in one of my previous videos. And I'm also really curious what happens if I try to move this object closer to the water, but it doesn't really seem to do well anything. For some reason the water doesn't want to render behind this glass, and I'm not sure why that is. But this is actually really interesting to well see. But now I wanted to move into the environment maps, which is a system for dynamic indoor reflections, where Roblox is saying that they've been using the skybox for information on how reflections should look. But basically, there is the comparison with disabled and enabled environment maps, where you can see the clear difference on the character, on like the helmet or the visor, the sword and even these materials right here. But again, this is not going to be actual reflections. And neither this feature is considered screen space reflections, or simply SSR. But if I just scroll down to around right here, there is a question on why not use screen space reflections, where they are saying that this feature is not for mirrors, it's to improve shading of most CPBR metallic objects indoors. But again, I'm going to leave a link to this in the description if you want to read it yourself. And now about the thing that I talked about previously, if it comes to shading, there is even a little definition on the dev forum under the 3D workspace and the material tab, saying right here that shaders generate the look and feel of materials, and the base material shaders work differently than the shader which material variant instances use. So you can't create custom materials that look exactly like the base materials, but you still can create custom materials that use their textures. And what all of this means is that the default Roblox materials each have a specified shader basically applied to them. And the thing about the material variants are going to be using, I think, a different shader that's the same across all of them. But overall you have a table of IDs of which color map, normal map, metalness and roughness the materials in Roblox Studio use. Same for pre-2022 beta, the current terrain and the pre-2022 terrain. And lastly, I also wanted to talk about something that has been popping up every time I talk about a new Roblox feature, which is going to be people, well, kind of complaining. And saying that Roblox is adding, well, useless AI features, for example, instead of doing something like actual shaders, volumetric stuff, and so on. So I quickly just wanted to mention that adding new shaders or even having like a custom shader system would have to be implemented into the rendering engine. And personally, I can't say how hard or easy it is to implement those shaders because Roblox uses its own custom rendering system. I found a wiki page saying that on March 28, 2014, like I said, Roblox has started using their own custom custom built-in rendering engine. And if I go to this reference right here, it's going to take me to the Wayback Machine, saying well, farewell to Ogre, the new Roblox rendering engine is here. And this is from the Roblox blog. And here they are saying that Roblox is proud to announce the full-blown release of a custom build rendering engine, now powering games across Roblox and so on. But my point is that it wouldn't be as simple as oh well just add this feature or just add this new shader because adding even a simple shader requires a lot of work not only with the rendering system but also the front and the back end and making sure that it runs correctly on all of the platforms and devices and the smaller stuff where it also needs to be well compatible and just not break on every single occasion. And also, I don't remember exactly when, but Roblox has shown reflection probes at a Hack Week demo a few years ago, and well, those probes still aren't implemented. So by that alone, you can probably guess that there isn't really going to be too many new shaders coming out in the next years. Except, well, maybe if Roblox finds a way or makes a system that can actually allow for that. But overall, I just wanted to make this video because, like I said, a lot of people have been complaining, constantly asking for, like, new shaders, and I actually wanted to research into this. Because, well, not gonna lie, I also want new shaders in the engine, because what we have right now isn't really, you know, too groundbreaking. But yeah, that's basically just going to be everything. So again, go check out my Patreon page and leave a like and subscribe to support the channel. And thank you for watching. I hope everyone had a nice day and see ya guys.